All right. That's one. We're into equations. We're going to start converting these bad boys. But I got to take you to Trig. Now, I don't know if you remember this. X over R is equal to cosine of theta. Y over R is equal to sine of theta. Not certain if you remember that. But I, th I think you probably could. I think you probably could remember that. This is all the unit circle stuff. Except the thing is, on a unit circle, how long is the radius? It's just one. Where x goes with cosine, y goes with sine. But I say goes with because not all circles have a radius of one. They can have any radius. Well, again, if you don't understand this, just take it as it is. It just is. That's true. That's from trigonometry. So we're going to do a conversion so we can go back and forth between x's and y's and r's and thetas. And all we're going to do here is multiply by r on both sides of these. And we're going to find out that x is equal to r times cosine of theta. And y is equal to r times sine of theta. These are our conversions right here. All right, well, let's take it a step further. Let's start taking some graphs. Um, uh, I don't know how, how, how we want to do this. Oh, you know what? Let's just draw a line. Make a dot. And let's make that R units long. I got to get you to believe me that uh, X over R is equal to cosine and Y over R is equal to sine. But let's think about this as an X's and Y's. So that point right there is just X comma Y. Which means if you just drop the perpendicular, we'd say the adjacent side is X. The opposite side is Y. And there's our little angle right in there. So hold on, let me, let me solve for sine of that angle. Sine of the angle is equal to Y over... Uh, oh. Oh, there it is. Come on, gosh. And then cosine of theta? Wouldn't that be X over... That's where these come from. It just is. It's true. Okay. But I think we can go a little bit further with this. So that's one conversion. If you ever want to go from R's and thetas into X's and Y's, you're going to use this. Look, if you're given an R and a theta, shoot, you just plug it in. You'll get X and you'll get Y. But we also have to know to go the other direction. Where, what if we're in X's and Y's, which this is what we're going to do a lot more of, and we want to go into polar. Now, not points. I'm writing it that way just to kind of show you that there's polar points. Well, yeah, they're points. I'm sorry. I, I misspoke. Well, how could we solve for things? Is there any sort of relation between X, Y, and R? No, there probably isn't, you know? Right triangles, you can never really put it. Of course you can. Of course you can. Look at this. X squared plus Y squared is equal to R squared. Oh, so if you're given an X and a Y, getting, getting the radius isn't that bad. You just square up both of your components and then add them, and you get the radius squared. Now, what if we wanted this freaking angle? And all we know is this point. We wanted to know this angle right here. But the thing is, all we know is the opposite and the adjacent. We only know the opposite and the adjacent. Opposites, adjacents, opposites, adjacents. Soka to Toa. We got it. We could say that tangent of an angle is equal to y over x. Well, at least we can get tangent. I mean, shoot, we could even take it a step further. Oh, you're not going to like this. Hit both sides of this with an inverse, and we get that theta is equal to inverse tangent of y over x. If 
Oops, I need a little bit more room. If theta is in between zero and, or negative pi over two and pi over two, and oh no, the angle is the plus pi. If the angle is uh, between pi over two and three pi over two, if we're in the second or the third quadrant, because the inverse tangent is only defined in the first and the fourth. That's a lot. That's a lot. But let's let's wait on this for a second, okay? Let's go into some problems and let's see that it's not that bad. Well, let's let's go this way. Let's take a polar point. Let's call it, I don't know, three comma pi over three. And we want to convert it into X's and Y's. Now we'll start with points, but we're doing this so we can start to convert into equations into other equations. Well, our formula says, well, if you want to convert, what, what, what was it? Oh yeah, x equals r cosine and y equals r sine. Cool. So x is equal to r times cosine of theta. There's r, there's theta. So x is equal to three times cosine of pi over three. And now let's find our y. I don't even want to plug it in yet. y is equal to r sine of theta. If you ever get confused on which one goes with which, doesn't c come before s, cosine, in alphabetical order? Doesn't x come before y? Keep it straight like that. Pretty good. So that will pop everything like it's three times sine of pi over three. Now we're going to need exact values on this, no rounded decimals. Cosine of pi over three is clearly one half, so we get three over two. Sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2, so we get 3 root 3 over 2. Hence, our point that we're going to get is at 3 halves, comma, 3 root 3 over 2. And we just converted. It's not that bad. And what's beautiful about this is you can even give just freaking negative numbers in here. Who gives a crap? Let, let, let's do this. Let's do negative 3 comma pi over 3. And I'm just going to jump over to the side and say that's going to be negative 3 times cosine of pi over 3. We don't have to stress about that negative at all. That negative radius, nah, it just comes out in the wash. So we get negative 3 times a half for negative 3 halves. And we can say our y is equal to negative 3 sine of pi over 3. So y is equal to negative 3 root 3 over two. All it did was change our sign. We didn't have to keep track of it, and we have a new point. This is not that bad. You just got to put some time into it, and you will knock it out. Now let's go the other way. The way that we're going to want to typically go, where I'm going to give you an x and a y, which is equal to, uh, and let's do one comma negative one. And I'm, there's only so many I can give you because I'm always going to make sure the angle turns out to be like a pi over six, a pi over four, a pi over three, a pi over two, something like that. And we want to convert this into r comma theta. Well, we want to go back and we need to start using a couple of different rules. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. But we could take this a step further I don't like this formula very much. Just by hitting it with a square root, we could choose plus or minus. I'm pretty sure you want to choose plus. And that our angle is equal to inverse tangent of y over x, depending on what quadrant we're in. So let's tackle this. Well, let's go get our radius first. It says the radius is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But there's your x, there's your y, so you're like, all right, 1 and negative 1. Put it all together, and that's a square root of 2, all right? 1 squared, negative 1 squared, 1 plus 1 is 2. We found a radius. Now let's go get an angle, but you got to be careful with the freaking angles. you got to be careful with the angles. Do you know how to plot a 1 comma negative 1? And this is all I'm asking you to do. 1 comma negative 1. Positive x, negative y. It's down here. It's in the fourth quadrant, right? If you're ever in the first 
or fourth, this is your formula. This inverse tangent of y over x. Therefore, our angle is going to be inverse tangent of our y value, negative 1, over our x value. So inverse tangent of negative 1, clearly we all know that. That's negative pi over 4. It's not 7 pi over 4 by using an inverse, but isn't negative pi over 4 down here? In between 0 and negative pi over 2, or actually between negative pi over 2 and 0? Yeah, it's got to be. So we have a point. That's root 2 comma negative pi over 4. But online homework is sometimes a, a butthole about stuff. And it wants you to actually get this with a positive angle. But we're going to find something coterminal. You just add 2 pi to it. It's still going to terminate at the same spot. So that we just multiply by 4 top and bottom and we get 7 pi over 4. These are the same points. So polar does not have unique points. Any point you find has infinitely many r's and thetas you can put together. Unlike x's and y's, when you have an x and a y, if it says 1 comma negative 1, there is only one freaking point. There's no other way to represent that. Unless you wrote 2 over 2 divided, or comma negative 2 over 2. That's not going to work. Now let's do one last one. I know we're starting to get into it a little further, but I want to I want to get to the trick. Let's do this x comma y, and let's convert it into polar. So I'm going to call this negative root 3 comma 1, and we want to put this into polar. Well, we know that we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So let's do that first. Let's go solve for our radius. So we could just hit both sides with the square root and say that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. But again, that's really bad for converting uh, equations, but we're not there yet. So let's take our x and our y. We'll pop them in. And what do we got? Root 3 squared is 3. If you weren't looking at it, I would even put the negative in. 1 squared is 1, so r is equal to square root of 4. r is equal to 2. Let's go. So we got the radius. Cool. Now let's go find that angle. The problem is you should always just check it and be like, all right, I got a positive, or I got a negative x. Negative x is live over on this side. And we have a positive y. So that's over here. So that means we have a point that's in the second quadrant. The problem is inverse tangent only can get you values in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. It's the only way. So if you're ever in the second or the third quadrant, when we do our formula to get our angle, it's inverse tangent of your y over your x. We've got to add a little pi. Just add pi to it. Right? So watch what's going to happen as we put this in. Theta is equal to inverse tangent of our y value, 1 over negative root 3. And I'm just adding plus pi. Just ignore the plus pi for a second. Now we all know that inverse tangent of negative 1 over root 3 is equal to negative pi over 6. All right, so if we didn't add the pi, we'd be like, oh, we're right here. At negative pi over 6. But that x and y value is certainly not in the freaking fourth quadrant. It's in the second quadrant. So we have to add our pi to it. Let me do a little something like that. Oops. And we get 5 pi over 6. Ah, there it is. This point's over here. That point is at 2 comma 5 pi over 6. So you want to make sure that you're, you're matching your quadrants. So, all right, no more than 15 minutes. I'm going to shut up right now, and we're going to get into how to convert equations, more exciting, fun stuff. All right, see.